it's Izzy from Tech Tire and Wheel here to welcome you to the Tech University Truck Puncture Repair course. In this course, we'll discuss the steps for a proper one-piece puncture repair in truck tires. We'll teach you the tech recommended repair process, including techniques, tools, how to best apply product and install repairs. Today, we're focusing on the first step of proper tire repair, which is R. Remove the tire from the wheel and inspect the tire. By removing the tire from the wheel, this allows you to fully inspect the tire, including the inside of the tire for any non-repairable conditions. This inspection is to ensure the tire is able to be repaired and is safe to return to service. Remember that your role as a tire technician is important as you inspect and assess if a tire is repairable. Your inspection should include the bead area, the sidewalls, the tread area, and the inside of the tire. If you see any injuries during this inspection, mark them with a high quality tire marker. When the tire is inspected, there are several conditions deemed by the tire industry as non-repairable. These are a tire that has been run flat or underinflated, tire inner liner separations, tire casing separations, excessive tread wear, exposed body plies or cables, deformed bead, exposed fabric or steel, ozone cracking, damage from impact. Once you determine that the tire does not suffer from any of these non-repairable conditions, it's time to begin the second step in the process, which is E. You guys know this, evaluating the injury. As you evaluate the injury to a tire, if the object that punctured the tire is still present, you need to remove it. This is the perfect time to visually examine the injured area of the tire. Next, by using Tex TRT-105 inspection tool, you'll be able to quickly and precisely measure the size and the angle of the injury while minimizing the chance of enlarging the damage area. The injury size and angle are two critical pieces of information you'll need to select and install the appropriate repair. Please note, if the injury angle exceeds 35 degrees, a two-piece repair must be used. Extreme angles of injury can put excessive stress on the repair at the base of the stem, resulting in the need to use a two-piece repair. Refer to Tech's training course on two-piece repairs to learn this procedure. Now let me clarify an important point regarding the angle of an injury. The industry standard for a two-piece repair is 25 degrees. Tech has performed extensive in-house testing and engaged an independent outside testing facility to determine the maximum angle of injury that Tech products can safely repair. The results from both in-house and the independent lab confirm that Tech's one-piece repair system can safely repair an injury angle of 35 degrees or less. The injury size and location has limitations per industry standards. For passenger and fabric body ply LT tires, the maximum injury size is a quarter of an inch or six millimeters. For steel body ply LT and larger tires, the maximum injury size is three eighths of an inch or 10 millimeters. To be considered a puncture repair, the injuries must be located in the crown area of the tire. States have been enacting laws regarding tire repairs, so be sure to verify your state's maximum allowable injury size. Keep in mind that injuries in the shoulder and sidewall areas cannot be repaired with a Tech Uniseal Ultra Repair. In this example, the injury is less than 35 degrees and in the crown area of the tire, so a Tech Uniseal Ultra Repair can be used. Here we can see the injury has accepted the tool just below the fourth line. This calls for the use of a Tech 290 UL Uniseal Ultra Repair for a 3 8 or 10 millimeter injury. In this training course, we'll learn the third step in the tech process, P, for prepare the injury. You now need to pre-clean a large area around the injury on the inner liner of the tire by applying Tech Rubomatic Rubber Cleaner. Begin by spraying or pouring Tech Rubomatic on the area to be cleaned. While the area is still moist, use a rubber scraper to remove contaminating substances. This process should be repeated three times to guarantee complete removal of contaminants like silicone mold lubricants used in the tire's manufacturing process. Failure to remove these materials can lead to contamination of the repair area and possibly to failure of the repair unit. It will also help prolong the life of your buffing wheel by preventing buildup in the tool. Next, 
center the appropriate tech repair template over the injury and using a tire marker, trace around the edge of the template. Now, the line you traced around the template will serve as a guide for mechanical buffing of the inner liner. If a template is unavailable, freehand trace an area half an inch larger than the repair unit. This will ensure the buffed area is large enough for proper installation of the repair unit. Next, mechanically buff within the marked area using a low RPM buffer. Make sure your buffer does not exceed 5,000 RPMs. If the speed of the tool exceeds 5,000 RPMs, scorching of the rubber surface will occur, which will greatly reduce the adhesion of the repair unit to the inner liner. I know it's tempting to go over five, but trust me. Also, be sure to use an appropriate buffing wheel to achieve a number one or number two buff texture. Mechanical buffing ensures proper adhesion of the repair unit to the inner liner by creating a clean textured surface. When buffing the inner liner, be sure to run the buffing wheel from side to side across the inner liner as shown. This will prevent cutting grooves into the inner liner and promotes better adhesion of the repair to the tire. After you have achieved the proper buff texture, use the appropriate size Tech Carbide Cutter in a low speed drill with a maximum speed of 1200 RPMs to properly prepare the injury. The low speed drill eliminates the possibility of scorching the rubber in the injury. It is important to follow the angle of the injury you previously determined from the inside of the tire. Equally important is to ensure your drill is rotating in a clockwise rotation so the tool properly cuts out the damaged material. Now drill out the injury from the inside of the tire and repeat this process a minimum of five times in a truck tire. Next, repeat this procedure five times from the outside of the tire to ensure proper injury preparation. The A in text process represents applying the vulcanizing fluid. So let's get started. After you have properly buffed the tire's inner liner, you now need to remove any leftover debris. Using a soft wire brush on a low RPM buffer, lightly brush from the right side of the prepared surface to the left side to remove loose buffing dust and steel shavings from the buffed surface. This is an important step to create a clean prepared surface to maximize repair unit adhesion. You may need to repeat this process two to three times to ensure that all buffing dust and steel shavings are removed. Do not use a compressed air line for this procedure. The compressed air may contain moisture and oil that will contaminate the buffed surface. Now vacuum all buffing dust and steel shavings from the tire. Avoid contacting the buffed surface with the vacuum as this can also contaminate your prepared surface, which will compromise repair unit adhesion. Next, apply Tech 760 chemical vulcanizing fluid into the injury from inside the tire using a spiral cement tool. When inserting the tool, be sure to rotate in a clockwise direction. This procedure should be repeated three to five times depending on the thickness of the tire. You'll leave the spiral cement tool in the injury to prevent the vulcanizing fluid from drying completely. Follow this by applying a thin, even coat of Tech Chemical Vulcanizing Fluid to the buffed surface of the inner liner. Do not apply vulcanizing fluid to any unprepared surfaces. This could lead to contamination of the repair area and the can of vulcanizing fluid. You need to allow approximately three to five minutes for the vulcanizing fluid to dry. Additional drying time is required in cold and humid climates. Vulcanizing fluid must be completely dry before applying the repair to avoid trapping solvent under the repair, which could create air bubbles resulting in repair failure. Next, you will prepare the Uniseal Ultra Repair Unit for installation. Begin by removing the protective poly covering from the stem by twisting and pulling the stem to break the poly free. Next, reposition the poly on the repair to expose the center of the repair unit. A word of caution, touching the cushion gum will cause contamination that may lead to repair failure, so don't touch it. This is why you will use the plastic as a place to hold the repair. Now apply Tech 760 chemical vulcanizing fluid to the black tapered area of the stem. This ensures proper lubrication when installing the repair unit. If you're using a tire spreader, be sure to relax the tire beads to prevent what is known as bridging of the repair unit. Bridging creates areas where portions of the repair are not making full contact with the tire's inner liner. This can lead to premature failure of the repair. You may now remove the spiral cement tool. 
Then feed the lead wire of the Uniseal Ultra into the injury from the inside of the tire. Next, grasp the lead wire on the outside of the tire with a pair of pliers and carefully begin to pull the Uniseal Ultra into the injury. Pull until the repair unit seats against the inner liner. Be sure not to over pull. This will cause dimpling and possible breakage of the stem. Once the Uniseal Ultra is in place, press down on the center of the repair unit with your thumb. Now, using your stitcher, stitch the repair unit down, working from the center outward. This process removes any air that might be trapped between the repair unit and the inner liner of the tire. Exert firm pressure on the stitcher to maximize adhesion. After partially stitching the repair, remove the colored poly from under the edge and continue stitching to the edges of the repair. After stitching is completed, make sure to remove the clear protective covering found on the cap of the repair as shown. Now you will go to the outside of the tire and cut off the Uniseal Ultra stem approximately an eighth of an inch or three millimeters above the tire's outer surface. The Uniseal Ultra stem is now properly in place. Before we get to step six, just a few items to follow up on to finish the repair installation process. If you are repairing a tube tire, cover the repair with Tech Tire Talc number 706-1 to prevent the repair unit from vulcanizing to the tube. When repairing a tubeless tire, seal the edge of the repair unit and the overbuffed area with Tech number 738 security coat or number 739 butyl liner repair sealer. These repair sealers help to restore the air retention properties of the buffed inner liner beyond the area covered by the repair as shown. So what all is entailed in returning the tire to service? Well, we have to remount the tire to the wheel, then balance the tire and wheel assembly, then install the wheel assembly to the vehicle following proper procedures, and if the vehicle is equipped with TPMS, relearn the system if necessary. On behalf of all of us at Tech Tire and Wheel, we appreciate you investing in our training and wish you great success as a trained tire repair technician. It's been great sharing Tech's repair process and tips on how to properly install a one-piece repair. You are a professional by now, and now you have the knowledge and insight to feel confident in performing this repair. If you have questions, contact the course instructor, your tech distributor, or visit our website, techtirerepairs.com.